that you no longer wish for me to honor my duty to serve you as your king because of the color of the wife I have chosen. South Africa's racialist disease has infected all our neighboring countries and us. Look around you. Our schools, hospitals, churches, all segregated in practice, if not in law. Are we to now uphold the abomination that is apartheid in our own Kotla? The very same abomination that has been oppressing us for decades. Is this to be the future for our mm. Africa? That there hasn't been a project that he's worked on that has let us down. Mm. In terms of the different variety of characters this man has played. I bump into his movies <laughs> and not realize it's him. Okay. Or knew it he would be in the movie. And you know, I would think, damn, what a great movie. Oh, look who's in it. Of course. Heather, I'm gonna name a few. Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Middle of Nowhere. These are all movies I bump in. I fly a lot, so I watch a lot of movies on the airplane. And when I sit at home, I'm a movie buff. Lincoln. <laughs> Uh, which was amazing. The Butler, uh, Selma. Ooh, come on. What can we say about Selma? <laughs> Critics' Choice Award, NAACP Image Award, uh, Nightingale won the Critics' Choice Television Award for Best Actor in a Movie and Miniseries. Wow. Uh, I could go on and on with a list of accolades. Uh, when he played Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, in Selma, um, I felt like I met the man myself <laughs> right through the screen and I know it was an honor for you to play him um but it was an honor for us to receive how you played him cuz I felt like I met him oh, before I you. met you thank you uh David Oy Oyelowo that's right. There hey. it is. <laughs> Man, I've been practicing that name for four weeks. <laughs> that was good work. That was, good that was all work. right, right? <laughs> and now, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. What a pleasure. I was telling him my stepfather is Nigerian, from yeah. Nigeria, you know, and um, I haven't had a chance to go. You were... Not raised there at all, right? Where were you raised? I was born in the UK, but I lived in uh, Nigeria from the age of six to thirteen. So, uh, so seven years I was I was in Nigeria. And then you moved to moved back to the UK, and then uh, I've now lived in the states for ten years now. For ten years, yeah. So when before you hit the big screen, you did off Broadway, Broadway, or plays. Well, or... I, I I was I was in drama at drama school in the UK. Then I was at the Royal Shakespeare Company for three years. Then did a TV show in the UK for three years. Then started doing movies. But you know, all of my uh, cinematic heroes were were here. Sidney Poitier is my idol, of course. Oh. Denzel Washington as well. And so, I just felt you know if I if I want to hit those heights, I probably have to transplant myself into a different place. And that's where they were thriving. And so uh, that. That's what prompted the move here. You feel like you hit those heights? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, having you say what you just said about my movies is is, is definitely indicative of the fact that uh, you know I'm I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. I I'm love blessed. His you voice. like that? Heather? I like his voice. Yeah. Yeah. See, y'all get caught, caught up in his voice. Soul. <laughs> soul is here. Yeah, I love his voice. Crazy. Um, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the script here, ladies. No, just kidding. <laughs> this um, movie, A United Kingdom, mm. uh, you play Prince Kam? Since uh, Saretse Kama. Saretse Kama. Yeah. This is an interesting story because mm -hmm. it's about love. It is. That's really all it's about, right? It really is, yeah. I mean, people, you know, often ask me because it, it has a historical context, it has a political context, it's an interracial uh, marriage uh, as well. But you're right, it's a, it's a love story and an epic love story. They were actually the one of the most famous couples in the world after the Second World War and their desire to be together was opposed by continents, nations, mm -hmm. tribes, society. And, uh, you know, their love helped them overcome. An interracial couple, which seems almost laughable, but we still deal with that in this day and age, too. Absolutely. When people are from different races, we're all the same race, in my opinion. But these folks were exiled from their country, right? That's exactly right. That's For the sake of their love. Literally. Literally, um, Suretsi Kama had to... Uh, forgo his right to be king in his own nation and was exiled to the UK for, for five years and, uh, you know, ended up 
saying, okay, I won't be king, but went on to become the first democratically elected president of his nation. Wow. Powerful movie. And then and in terms of his wife, what did she lose? Well, you know, she her her family mm-hmm. um, completely disowned her. Uh, the society that she had grown up with in the in in the UK saw her as marrying beneath herself. Even though this man was the heir to the throne of Botswana, <laughs> yeah. he was about to be the king of Botswana. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, she ex- experienced firsthand all of a sudden what it was like to be discriminated against. And yet, she she stuck with him. And not only that, but she really embraced his. Culture culture, his country, and went on to be instrumental in a lot of the uh, benefits that women gained in, mm-hmm. in Botswana through her advocacy. They they told, uh, they, they made her feel that if you marry this man and go off to this foreign land, you're going to be the reason for the downfall mm. of the British Empire in Africa. True? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, e- yeah. exactly right. I mean, you had a time where the, the British Empire was trying to hold on to all of those countries that they turned into colonies yeah. in, in Africa. And it was a time where Africa had had enough. We, you know, we wanted our land back. We wanted our resources back. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this was a case in point. Uh, Botswana was a protectorate of the United Kingdom, but South Africa, which was just bringing in apartheid, was threatening Great Britain, saying we won't give you uranium for the Cold War, we won't give you gold for your economy, we're going to take ourselves out of the Commonwealth if you allow this couple to stay together. Mm. And uh, Great Britain, who feared all of those things, saw this couple as collateral damage. See, the Titanic was a love story. (laughs) (laughs) That was fiction. Mm -hmm. This is a love story right here. I I agree with you. Um, I'm curious. I know a lot of our listeners are uh, interracial couples. And um, I'm curious to what they've experienced um, in their their time fighting for their love. Uh, Someone open up the phone lines for that. You know, uh, we're talking about the uh, movie uh, United Kingdom. Uh, David Oyelowo is here, um, 888-742-3345. Interracial couples, call up. Sway in the morning. David Oyelowo is here. Um, he plays Prince Seretsi Kama. That's right. Uh, the movie is in United Kingdom. It's in theaters this Friday. I got a chance to see some of the clips from the movie, and I was mad because I didn't have access to the entire movie. Uh, but I was also, I do that on purpose because I don't like to see the whole movie. I like to go to a theater and have the whole full movie experience. Cool. Powerful movie. Um, I want to open up the um, phone lines. But Tracy, you had a question? You yeah, ask absolutely. Because um, earlier when we were speaking about kind of just walking us through your path and your career, and I have a lot of girlfriends who are Nigerian, who mm. I love dearly. And the thread between them all is they spoke about when they were younger and they were just discriminated mm. against a lot, and they didn't feel proud right. for being Nigerian. And so I'm wondering, wow. yeah, like they they didn't, um, they always had trouble with explaining their full names and mm. had like short inversions. Did you at all feel uncomfortable in your skin? It would be interesting to find out if if any of them had spent much time in Nigeria, because I don't think it's possible to have spent time in Nigeria yeah. and feel that way. Uh, you know. One of the blessings for me of living in Nigeria for a time is that I was able to completely sidestep a minority mentality, which I think is what can happen when people say your name is odd, uh, you know, and, and where you're from is odd. But when you've been there, when everyone around you looks like you, when everyone else has a name that's steeped in meaning, I mean, my name means a king deserves respect. I'm not about to shorten that name. (laughs) You know, so there's nowhere I go that I feel um, any of that subjugation, I I actually think, and marginalization that can come with being told that you are lesser than for who you are. Um, So that that was a benefit. But that's a a shame. And, And there were people who said to me as an actor, you know, you should you should change your name. If if I had checked my dad, what are you talking? You're going to check. Ah, do you know who you are? <laughs> yeah. So, so right. there's there's no way that was going to happen. Right, David. How do you balance it all? Because it's on record that you're a Christian, that right. you're a husband, that you're a father of four. Yeah. And then there's this industry. Mm. You know, it's still Hollywood. Yeah. Then how do you, if you could share a little bit, how do you balance it all? A lot of prayer. You know, I mean, uh, it's 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 an industry that 
um, is difficult no matter who you are. Yeah. But I think if it is the center of your life, you are in trouble. You know, mm. and I build my life on a different rock. You know, my foundations are different. The Bible talks about if you build your life on sand, when the storms come, you will fall. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I know that to be true. And mine is a very sandy profession, put it that way. Mm. Um, so, you know, and I pray about everything I do before I do it, the roles I do. You know, we, my wife and I talk about it. I go to God with it. And uh, it turns out God has good taste. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, that that's what governs my life. <laughs> I love yeah. The movie is <laughs> United Kingdom <laughs> Theater. It's Friday. Um, you play Prince Soretzi, comma, and um, Ruth Williams is played by Rosamund Pike. That's right, yeah. Who does an excellent job in that, too. Yeah. You guys, the chemistry just yeah. looks really real. Is it? it um, how was that working opposite of her? She is just a phenomenal actress. Yeah. I mean, anyone who saw her in Gone Girl would mm -hmm. see that she's just a transformative uh, performer but i had worked with her on a film called jack reacher mm -hmm. um where we had very different kind of roles in that in fact i tase her in a lift in that, <laughs> oh <my laughs> in, that in that one so i thought i'd apologize with a love story um but uh, she's just one of those actresses who you can never predict what a rosamund pike performance is going to be and mm -hmm. i felt that's what you needed with this woman who you could believe why this prince would you know risk everything to be with her she looked beautiful in it too yeah, she's, um, she's a stunning lady. He, it was a scene where you said, you know, I didn't marry you because of your good looks. <laughs> she kind of pulled her skirt down. I saw her inner thigh. I thought the, I thought the director would should have said cut, but I'm glad he didn't. Um, wow. That was, that was just for you. That, that was, was for just, me. Yeah, that was just for you. Sway's going to see this at some point. Um, Jack Reacher, he just throws that out there like that's just Tom this Cruise. film. Tom Cruise, man. You know, yeah. Tom's my friend. Um, so we got people on the line. <laughs> uh, if you, you know, just if you can relate to this movie. It's based on a true story. It's a true story uh, of two people who fought for their love and, you know, put their love in front of their country, you know, at the risk of um, being exiled, which they were. And some, and they're inter, it's an interracial couple. So we got Trent from Cali on the line. What's up, Trent? Trent? Hey, Sway. Big fan. Big fan. You guys do your thing out there. I appreciate it. I, there's, there's a bet, highlight of my morning going into work is uh, watching your guys' show, listen, oh. or listening to your guys' show on the radio. Hey, man, thank you. Hey, Trent, you're a citizen. That's why in the morning. That's That's up, so you, yeah, you, thank you. Thank you. So you can relate to this story then? Yes, yes, I can. I actually, um, I'm active duty military, and um, I met this girl out here. got me one of the Cali girls, and she's a beautiful, strong black woman. And uh, coming from Oklahoma, born and raised, uh, it took a little bit for my family to, to accept her. But when they realized who she was, uh, they they were all on board, and um, you know, out here in California, even now, we still get a lot of bad looks and stuff going at you know a lot of people judging us because I'm white and she's black, and uh, the biggest one is to accept it as my ex-wife. She's got my two kids with her, and as soon as she found she was all up about me having my kids and taking care of them, and I've been trying to get you know maintain that relationship with my two kids and my ex-wife, but as soon as she found out on Facebook. Facebook stalked me, found out that she was black. I haven't talked to my kids in six months. Oh. Wow, that ain't right. Wow. I gotta take her, I'm in the middle of taking her back to court. Yeah, you gotta go she was to all court. cool with yeah. it, you know, she was happy about, you know, oh, hey, you got your girlfriend, I'm, I'm so happy. And then she found out she was black, so they gave me the blacklist. Isn't that interesting, like in this day and age, right? I mean, that, that, that's, that's one of the realities. You know, people say, yeah, some of my best friends are black. And then, you know, it's all, yeah, I love black people mm -hmm. until you are about to marry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> until you're about to become part of the family. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had it the other way as well. You know, my dad, when I first introduced my wife, who's white, to, to him, he, he said, to, first thing he said, one day she's going to wake up and realize you are black. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, but you know when I spoke I to him more about, <laughs> I know he just he just says what's on his mind. Um, but he had experienced a lot of racism in the UK when he you know he had hot coffee poured on him, he would be spat at, and so you know he didn't want that for his son. He was projecting his experience onto me, mm -hmm. his prejudice really onto mm -hmm. me. But soon after he met Jesse's parents, because that was his big fear. He was like, okay, this girl, you know, we'll see. But her parents, I guarantee. They're not going to be down with this. And, 
you know, they they met and they're just the loveliest people. And it's now to the point whereby I can't even get a word in when my wife and my dad are in the same room. I, I did, but how we, ah, Jessica, hey, go for a hug. You know, it's like, it's, like, it's like, I'm just in the corner. So, you know, I, I, I do think, you know, like our, our film shows and, and it's a shame what our friend on the phone is experiencing, but love, true love. Yeah you know, can can overcome these these prejudices. You know, what I often get is, and it's understandable, you know, black women who, uh, there's this syndrome. A lot of successful black men end up with white women. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that is, like I say, an understandable grievance. Yeah. For, and, and I've had conversations about that. But, you know, I've, I met my wife when we were 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. I didn't see color. I just fell in love with this human being. And, you know, when I, with her, I, I don't see color. Now, I think what often our sisters are reacting to, and I think it's quite right, is when it's about social status. Yeah. You know, right. yeah. if you think that being with a white woman somehow makes, elevates who you are in society, you know, to me, that's no different than some old guy who's with a very young woman and uh -huh. that somehow is, 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 is for his ego. Mm -hmm. But when it's true love, you know, all you have to do is be around me for my with with me and my wife. We've been together for eighteen years. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, now. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Numbers don't lie. Thank you. And our four beautiful kids. And mm -hmm. there's nothing about that to me that doesn't feel like part of God's divine plan. But I know that there are relationships that you know are, are questionable because of either the the low self esteem of yeah. certain black people or or or, or the exoticization of by by some white people mm. of black people you know so that there are questionable permutations but you know when it's real it's real it's real all right you know before you go david db prepared this thing db go ahead man. what did you got db go ahead. We, need, we need callers so <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you prepare? I didn't, I didn't say. It was a Black History Month trivia game, and we were going to give away signed copies of Selma because it is Black History Month. Right. So if you we wanted can. to participate. Uh, we got callers on the line, bro. Okay. We can ask them Black History <laughs> Month questions. <laughs> yeah, hold up, man. We're going to do this. This dude prepared this game for you. Let's do it. Right. Let's do it. All right. Let's tell you who, who, okay. This is take a call. Okay, we're going to take a call. <laughs> hey, Dame, what up? Dame's in Chicago. Dame, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, yeah. We're going to do something about Black History Month, okay? You ready? Yeah, I'm here, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm you, ready. if you win, you're going to get an autographed copy of Selma, DVD copy of Selma signed by David Oyelowo. Okay, go ahead. Here's the question. Awesome. All right, Black History Month is celebrated in February in the United States and Canada, but which month is it celebrated in the United Kingdom? Is it May, July, August, or October? Wow. Uh, I'm going to go with July. Wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. 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 Hey, Dame, you won. All right. Hold on. All right. At least you learned something today. Let me do one more. Let me do one the more. The answer hold is up. October. Okay, the, the answer is October. But give him one. Give him one. All right, you win anyway. We got, uh, David didn't know. David was like, huh? What? Now, yeah. All right, well, Black one History Month, what's that? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Sean from LA, go ahead. What's your, Sean, we're going to do a question. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Interracial marriage in the United States was banned in 1664. What year was it overturned? Is it 1955, 1967, 1972, or 1978? 67. You are oh, correct. You got a winner right here. See? Woo! The game works. The game works. You want to do one more? We got three copies. Yeah, oh, look. He, he's into it now. He's got a lot of work in this shit, damn it. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh... Let me see. Uh, let me see. Put them. Put them on hold. Put line two on hold. There, okay, I think there you go. Okay, right. So, uh, David, thank you for participating in this. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Black History Month began as Negro History. Wait, hold up, hold up. Oh, oh shit. Kamitris from Georgia. Go ahead. Kamitris, you there? Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm fine. How are you? Great. By the way, she's dating a white man. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a ding for you. <laughs> From the white guy. All right, go ahead. Final question. What? Uh, why was the month of February chosen as Black History Month in the United States? Was it A, to coincide with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln? B, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in February? C, celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday? Or D, the NAACP voted on February? D. What? D as in dog. Uh, sorry, it's A. But you still win. It's to coincide with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> oh, and we only my birthday is February 12th. 
And your birthday is February 12th. Happy birthday, Aquarius. Yep. Hold on the line. We got a birthday gift for you. There we go. David, did you know any of the answers to any of those questions? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I'm just an actor. Okay. <laughs> My job is to pretend knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David Oyelowo. Man, it's a pleasure. Honor to have you on this show, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Come back I had such a great time. Back. Thank oh, you. Good, good. Bless you guys. So thank your you dad, much. he has a fan in us. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will. Okay. We also want to thank Big Sean for coming by today. He got the new album, I Decided. Ice Cube for coming by today. He got the new movie, Fist Fight, that's in theaters next, next Friday. Friday. All right, um, and then make sure you check out a, a United Kingdom in th theaters this Friday, two days from now. Yeah, I'll be watching it, so make sure you do too, David. You're a citizen of Sway in the morning. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. Happy to be so. All right, we got Lord's uh, big Lord Sears up next. <laughs> big Sears. Big Sears. Who's on the show tomorrow? <laughs> got a home dinger, Sway. Who's on the show tomorrow? We got Maureen McCormick. She's going to be stopping by, as well as Lorenz Tate. Okay, great. Oh, wow, Ooh. I love him. Old dog and Marsha Brady. Marsha Brady's coming. No, no. Is it Marsha Brady? Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. And until tomorrow, we have nothing. Did you have something else? Left to say. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shea 45.